Hello, Libra. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Libra is your sun, your moon, or your rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Libra, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And a nine of wands is what we have to start. This is strength. This is conviction. This is uh, a certainty. This is an oath. This is a promise. This is resolve. This is willpower. This is strength that comes from knowing yourself. This is, um, maybe we're asking the question, where does our strength come from? Right? What is it that, um, that we're connecting with that gives us strength? Is it your, you know, your ancestors? Is it your self, your soul? Is it uh, God, goddess, deity? Um, is it your beliefs? Is it your conviction of something? All right. Let's see. Let's put this into some context, right? Let's see what's going on with this Nine of Wands, Empress Energy. Wow. Beautiful Empress Energy. We have a High Priestess. We've got a Five of, five of Cups. We've got a seven of, seven of Wands. We've got lust, strength in the future. This is that Leo energy. Um, this is confidence, bravery, courage. This is the result of our strength. And the strength is, well, I think that what's the strength is resting upon your connection to the divine, but also to your kind of your certainty about the future, right? I feel like the Empress here is kind of that, it's that promise that you feel. It's that life that you know is, is here. The life that you know is perhaps waiting for you. Nine of Cups, yeah, that I like that. Nine of Wands, Nine of Cups. Six of Wands. See, we have also here um, the Seven of Wands, which is difficulty, challenge. This is you kind of fighting, not giving up, even when the odds are against you. And that also is a result of your strength. It is your inner strength that allows you to fight even when the odds are great. Because it's like you have this certainty that, you're, that things are going to be okay, that you are going to overcome whatever these challenges are even when the odds seem overwhelmingly great. We have the Art or Temperance card. And the Temperance card is in the position of what we do not want. This, isn't that kind of odd? Uh, we don't want temperance. We don't want... Um, we're not looking for that balance. It's almost like we just need this fire. We need this strength. We need this courage. We need this bravery. Now's not the time to kind of to try to temper it, pull it back, and, and kind of... Um, to, to moderate it. What we need now is fire, confidence, right? Final card, the Eon. Rebirth, reawakening, baptism by fire. This is the doorway to a new era for you. And it's a fire card. It's a doorway of fire. No wonder we need all this fire energy, right? Because you're going through this very challenging thing. This is a big decision. The rest of your life awaits you on the other side of it. This is big news. And it's going to take a lot of courage, a lot of bravery, a lot of, um, a lot of certainty, confidence in yourself that no matter what the odds are, you can succeed. And what we need here is this kind of stature, this zest, this robustness of this lust or strength card, this Leo energy. This is that that energy that it feels like you fill space. 
that you can take a jewel out of the night sky, a star out of the heavens, and keep it, make a crown out of it, make a necklace out of it. Uh, this is that confidence that feels so unbelievably great and powerful. And it feels like this is what you need right now in order for you to make this big decision and do this big thing and walk through this big, scary, fiery doorway that is going to strip you down to your bare essence. This is the biggest, you know, the biggest moment of your life, biggest transition from this life to your future life, your future state. Um, it feels like we're kind of, we're ascending. It feels like it's a new dimension. It feels like it's like a new timeline, you know? Uh, Spirit is also showing me that there is some sort of necklace that you wear. And I don't know what it is. Um, it, it kind of feels like it's a cross, but it, it might be some other uh, symbol. Maybe it's a planetary symbol. Maybe it's a zodiac symbol. Maybe it's even a letter for a name or something. Um, but it's very important to you. And it's kind of like a, it's an emblem of your strength and power. It feels like it's kind of a big thing, too. Like maybe it's on a really, really long chain, really thick chain. It's a big piece. It's not some little tiny thing. It's bold. You know, it's out there. It's noticeable, right? The Spirit's showing me that. Um, the Five of Cups. We have a Five of Cups in the background here. And this is, this is interesting, too, because there are good days and bad days. We know that the emotions fluctuate here and there. And... Um, this is also kind of one of these things too, where we've got this, um, we've got this strength, this this inner strength, right? This conviction about the life that awaits us. We know that our paradise is on the other side of this, and we just need the courage to do it. Um, we've got the seven. We're overcoming that, and we're getting our six, right? We're getting that victory. We know that we can overcome these odds, no matter how great they are. We can do it. Kind of the same thing emotionally. We got this five of cups. We know that we've had disappointments. We've had loss in the past, right? Um, this is, this is the card of disappointment. This is the card of kind of, um, having, you know, negative emotions. We've all been there. We've all had sorrow and loss and pain and disappointment and hurt feelings. Um, but we have this, again, that strength. It all comes down to this crucial and critical inner strength that you have, Libra. And that's how you are taking all of these disappointments and nevertheless you feel like you're living your best life you feel the certainty that this is this is you pursuing your happiness and following your bliss nine of cups your general energy you got the nine of wands as your inner strength and the nine of cups as your general energy and these two right here, this tells me that no matter what happens, no matter what anybody tells you, no matter what happens in your life, disappointments, good days, bad days, no matter what, you have this certainty that you are moving into this future of absolute satisfaction and bliss, your best life, and that you're living it. Nothing can stop you. Right. And I feel like things have tried. You know, I feel the five of cups is back there for a reason because, yeah, there have been obstacles. We've got a five of cups and a seven of wands. There have been challenges. But one, your strength is resting on your faith. This certainty of this best life that awaits you. Right. And you're meant to see this. And maybe you're still back here in the Five of Cups. Maybe you're, you're still reeling from some recent loss, a breakup, some disappointment, or a setback of some kind, right? Spirit's telling you, focus on this fire. Figure out how to muster all of this strength and conviction. You know, um, rest on your faith. Use your faith, your connection with the divine, whether you're a, a religious person or whatever this might be, however you might experience the divine energy. Um, use it as your foundation, as your rock, and find your strength to manifest, to find your power, to find your stature. Now, let's select the mystery card. This is the bonus card, confirmation card. It's one random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. 
we'll just do that one. We're going to put Kevin, AKA Mr. Bates right there on top. And we're not going to look at that card until the very end. You know, it will tie everything together. It will give us our confirmation. And I think that we should make it a group exercise, make it interactive. So if you feel like you know what that card is, any point during the reading, put your answer, put your prediction down in the comments below. All right. I think it's a good idea to exercise that intuition. I feel like you have a very strong intuition. You know, this is a major arcane, a lot of major arcane cards today. One, two, three, four, five. We've got the, um, the instinct, the intuition. We've got that future kind of happy, blissful utopia, the paradise that you're, you're looking to manifest, right? You've got the strength and the, the confidence to do it. You feel like you have this magical power that will manifest this. It's a certainty here that nothing is going to stop you. Um, we also have this kind of this rejection of this idea of moderation. No, you're going to the extreme of this fiery confidence because that's the kind of energy that you need right now. We always, or not always, very often on this channel, we talk about the fire energy and how sometimes we've got to turn the burner down. You know, sometimes we have to ease off of the accelerator, drive a little slower. Um, sometimes it is about tempering or moderating our fire energy, our enthusiasm, our zest, our zeal. But not here, not in your case. Right now it's saying, go faster, harder, stronger. More confidence. Turn the heat all the way up, right? Maybe not to 10, right? We don't want to break the thing, but a nine, I think, is just right. You know, because it looks like a seven is not really enough. And so we need that extra push right now to get on the other side of that Eon card. This is also the card of the trial by fire. So it could really be a, this is the biggest challenge of your life. See, we have the seven of wands up here, the Eon card up here, it's at the top. So this is kind of the focus, right? Overcoming these odds to get to the future that you want. You have this certainty, you know what you want. You know what it's going to look like. And I feel like you've had a vision of it. I feel like you've had a lot of dreams about this. Literally, like, you know, visions while you're sleeping. And I feel like you believe in those dreams, that they are prophecies. And you believe them to be visions of the future. And I feel like we have this conviction that we will get there, that we will get that life that we want. And I don't know exactly what it is. If it's, um, well, I think it's a lot of things. I don't think it's just a job or career. I don't think it's just the, the place that you're living. I don't think it's just your relationships, you know, romantic friendships, family relationships, or otherwise. I feel like it's all of these things. Now, we've got our major, 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 major. We've got fire, fire, fire. We've got water, water. We don't have any air. We don't have any earth. This is the earth that you're trying to manifest. This is, this is your utopia. This is your vision, your version of earth that you are trying to um, create, manifest, that you are trying to, this is the destination to which you're trying to arrive. We don't have any, any air energy. So that right there alone, the simple fact that there's not a single sword, right? Let me just double check. Yeah. Not a single sword, uh, you know, on the table here, there is certainty. There's no doubt. There's no question about the reality of this, you know, about this manifesting. There's no, there's nothing, there's no issue. Major arcana, biggest spiritual um, event of your life, the moment everything changes, you know, and then of course we just have fire and water, fire and water, fire and water. That's the recipe, right? Fire and, and the water, the water, not really even 
so much. It, we think of the, the Ardor Temperance card here, and we think that it needs to be an equal, equal amount of water, equal amount of fire, right? Perfect. That's not the way cooking goes, you know? Sometimes you say, okay, you need, uh, let's say, uh, you need a cup of whatever, a cup of flour or whatever, um, a tablespoon of, I don't know, cumin or something. And then you just need a little pinch of the cayenne pepper, right? Just a little pinch. Nothing is equally proportioned, right? And I think if you go into any kind of cooking, right, any kind of uh, production, and you think that you have to use equal parts of everything, it's going to be a disaster, right? You use equal parts flour, equal parts baking soda. Ugh, that'd be terrible, right? I don't even know what would happen. Um, I'd have to ask my wife. She's the, the chef in the family. Um, we know that there are different recipes, different things that we're cooking up, you know, that require different amounts, different measurements of different parts of ourselves. And this is one of those recipes where you need all the fire energy. We're dumping a lot of cayenne pepper in here. And maybe even... You might even have been like create, craving more spicy food lately. I feel like you're drawn to the heat. You're drawn to this fire. And we really, maybe it's cold where you live. And we just, we want the fire right now. We want the creativity. We want the certainty. We want the rush. We want the momentum, the movement. You know, we want to feel it. And it could, in some ways, be um, a, a kind of counterbalance or an overcompensation of whatever this Five of Cups was or is. This could be a disappointment that's, that's fairly recently. You know? And it could be that we failed at something not because, um, maybe not because it wasn't meant for us or something, but just because we didn't, we didn't take the right initiative. We didn't have the confidence going into it. We didn't push it enough. We didn't put ourselves into it enough that we yielded too much. Okay. And it doesn't mean that, you know, I don't know if you got your heart broken or something, but it feels like we didn't put in enough power force. We didn't believe in ourselves enough and something didn't quite work out. That's okay. That happens all the time. I think now we're realizing that if we want the life we want, if we want that satisfaction, we got to turn up the heat. Yeah, we got to squeeze the juice, right? Shout out to Polly Shore. I heard he's a fan of the channel. He watches his readings here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. I heard that from a friend. I don't know if that's true. Um, the point is that we take responsibility for what we're manifesting. And I think... Now there's nothing that's going to get in your way, right? Absolutely, absolutely nothing. But we have to remember to rely on this foundation of our connectedness, our divine energy, and whether this is God, goddess, deity, guardian angel, spirit guides, ancestors, or all of these things, we realize that that is our connection, that that is where our power really comes from. And our strength and our power now, we are using this in the right way. And what I mean by that is the Six of Wands here. The Six of Wands is victory. It's overcoming challenges, right? It's a correction of the seven back to balance and harmony. Balance and harmony in the environment, this means that you're not going around just kicking everybody's butts. That you're aware of how your actions and your decisions are affecting other people. You still realize that you are part of the whole. And that's the caution with all of this fire energy. We don't want to go around burning everything. You know, and if we use the kind of kitchen analogy, and I do think that there's a connection with cooking. I don't know if that's something that you really are passionate about, or if you come from a, you know, in a family that you have restaurants or um, something like that. Um, with all this, everything we're putting into the pot, all the, all the heat that we're bringing in there, we don't want to totally ruin our palates. And we certainly don't want to crank the heat up on the stove so much that we burn what we're cooking. Okay? So we do have to be in control. It doesn't mean that we have to be 
temperate, moderate. You can have things be real spicy. You can cook things at a really high heat. But you still have to be in control. And we still have to be aware of how our actions and how our, how our food, right, what we're cooking up, is going to affect other people around us. You know, um, a lot of fire energy here, and it requires a very, very skillful chef in order to make this recipe really work. All right, but I think you you are doing it. Um, Let's see here. What is the challenge? So that's, that's the question here with the seven. Um, the seven of wands. This could just be a general feeling that God, the odds are really against you. It depends on what you're doing, where you are, you know, what you want. But maybe it feels that, yeah, you're up against a real mountain, you know. Um, but there's no, there's no doubt. It's just kind of a realistic thing that, yes, this is going to be challenging. This is a really big mountain that I'm climbing. We're just, we, we got to acknowledge it. We've got to be realistic about it. But there's no worry. There's no air and there's no swords here that says, oh, you're biting your nails. I don't know if I can do it. Maybe I should go home. I don't, you know, there's no self-doubt. There's no worry. There's no conflict within us about it. We're just in a very matter of fact way. Yes, the odds are crazy odds. Let's go do it. You know, I feel a very calm energy with you. Um, I feel like your dog is barking at you right now. Is that right? Spirit showed me a dog trying to get your attention. I don't know what that has to do with this. Um, probably nothing, right? Sometimes these details come in as confirmations or validations of the energy. Sometimes it's to offer a synchronicity for some of you. If those details aren't for you, don't worry about it. Leave them for the next person. I kind of feel like the dog barking is Spirit's way of, of trying to get your attention trying to remind you um, to always come back to your spiritual energy, always come back to your connection with the divine. I feel like this is important to emphasize this, right? Because otherwise, this fire energy, because we think of the, the fire energy of this card, the lust card, this is that stature where we feel so big, so great, so powerful that we can take the stars from the sky and, and create a crown or a necklace out of them. Think about how grand you have to be to do that, right? Spirit wants you to make sure that you put spirit first, that you can still humble yourself before the divine rather than feeling as if we are greater than the divine. Okay? So I think that's, I think the dog's barking at you, right? The dog's barking, I feel like, is also um, a strange reference to the office, uh, which would explain Kevin over here. Um, and I think it's really this feeling of exhaustion, physical exhaustion from what you've been doing. I feel like you've been on your feet for a long time and your dogs are barking, right? Um, so I feel that there is, there is still a need for a little bit of this temperance card, even though we are rejecting this idea of moderation. We're rejecting this idea of kind of middle ground and balance and this kind of, you know, um, this middle way you still have to be in control. You still have to know when to take care of yourself. Okay. And that I think is a really big, a big thing right now because we feel all this momentum, this fire energy where it's just like, I just want to keep going hour after hour, day after day. Maybe you're working on a creative project. You're working on some music or something that you're creating, you're writing a book. I don't know, but it feels like you don't want to eat. You don't want to sleep. You don't want to rest because you're just so in this energy. We have to remember to take care of ourselves too. Okay, uh, We're going to go to the path of the serpent here real quick. We talked about these cards already, but I want to give a little bit more attention over here. I'd also like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. Uh, and it helps out the channel. I appreciate it. It's a win-win situation. Yeah. The Nine of Cups. This, again, is the... Um, this is the... This is you living your best life, living your dream. This is you living in this kind of utopia of this empress energy, getting kind of everything you want and feeling satisfied with it. The nine of cups is a very interesting card because it's not a ten of cups. If you get everything you want, then there's nothing left to want. 
If you become sugar, you can no longer taste sugar. So we leave a little bit of room. We leave one cup empty. Maybe even symbolically, right? Um, if you have an altar somewhere and you have all these, these offerings, you leave one bowl, one cup with no offering in it. Which means, I still have work to do. Things can be absolutely perfect, I still have work to do. My life is never going to be perfect, I'm, I always have something to do. And we're human beings, we always need to have something to do. You know? Uh, my wife and I, we've got a daughter, she's almost four. Sometimes she'll say, I'm bored, this is boring. And, and I, I just kind of have to laugh to myself because it's like, I, I wish I had that problem, you know, because there's always something to do. You know, I've still got a day job. I'm trying to build a new studio for these readings. Um, we still got a family. My daughter's in so many activities. She's in jujitsu. She's really got the fire energy too. She wants to be in all these, you know, um, extracurricular kind of things. Uh, so when she says she's bored, it's like there are a million things that we could be doing right now, you know. And really what she means is that she's, she's just not enjoying what she's doing at the moment, right? So we just need to kind of switch activities at that point. Um, and I feel like that's kind of the, that's the thing here, that there's always something more to do. There's always something to strive for. And it's kind of like, yeah, when you stop enjoying what you're doing, that's kind of a signal that... Not that there's anything wrong with it, but just that we've gotten too close to the Ten of Cups. We've, we've almost exhausted the joy and bliss in this activity, and it's time to do more work. It's time to do something else, time to switch activities. Yeah. So we leave one cup, one bowl empty to say, I always need to do more. I always can uh, you know, continue doing work, continue striving. There's always more to do. That's the secret to enjoying things, I think. Uh, to always be in this, and this is really, this is a lot of satisfaction. This is really living your dream here, okay? And uh, the six of, of, of wands needs to be emphasized because it is a win, it is a victory, but it is not for you alone. It's in the position of your environment, so I, I feel like this is something that is, like you're leading other people across the finish line of something, yeah? that you going through this fiery doorway of that Eon card is not just for you. It's either for the people that are going to come after you. I mean, you know, behind you. I don't mean like you're being chased, but I mean like you're being the example for others, right? That are going to follow in your footsteps. Maybe your own kids, your own loved ones, maybe just for other people generally. Um, in a way, it's kind of an inspiration. You know, people feel like, wow, Libra really did that. Now I feel inspired, like I can do something too. You know, I feel like you have that effect on people. They see this fiery energy, this conviction, especially this certainty and this conviction and this strength in the, in the face of the odds, in the face of the, the five of cups kind of energy that you're not giving up, that you're not doubting, you're not quitting. It inspires other people. It really truly does. Now we're gonna see what Kevin's got for us for this mystery card. I'm thinking Earth Energy. I'd really like to see a Knight of Pentacles because that's the card that has the vision of the future, that can see all the details now. I can see this really, it's really taken shape. You can see long-term what it looks like. Yeah, that's my prediction. Uh, if you have a prediction, leave it in the comments now. And here we go. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. Well, this is... I mean, this is even better. This is the card that says it is your time. This is the cosmic wristwatch. This is spirit's timepiece. Yeah. It is time for you to do this. Everything is happening right on schedule. The spiritual train, right, is never late. Maybe we got there too early. Sometimes we get there too late. But the train is the train, and we got to get on board. Um, I feel like this is also the idea that your life is always expanding, we're always growing, we're always pushing the boundaries, and it's kind of a Nine of Cups thing, where there's always more to do. The wheel's always turning, there's always something that we should focus on, we can always improve, we can always do better, we can always strive for more balance, more harmony in our lives. Our work is never done. 
We don't want it to be done, right? Spirit has a plan for you. You've got a plan for you. Just so happens, your plan, Spirit's plan, pretty well aligned. That's the Wheel of Fortune. Now, we're going to do an extended reading, too. If you want to stick around, there's a link up here. There's a link down below. New readings for Libra every Wednesday and Saturday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. I am here every single day. You can come back and we can talk again tomorrow. Yeah. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Okay. Leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. And if you want to check out my wife's channel, she does tea leaf readings. She's over at ULA Tea Leaf Readings. That's U-L-A Tea Leaf Readings. Marvelous work. I want you to know, Libra, that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.